Hello and welcome to Virtualize Everything and Happy Pi Day. In honor of Pi Day, we thought we would bring you a Raspberry Pi episode. So today's video is going to be how to deploy a React development server in Docker on a Raspberry Pi. Now feel free to skip over the first part of this video if you already know how to set up a Raspberry Pi image or if you would like to do this in one of the other fashions that we've shown you how to set up Docker. So with that, let's get to today's video. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is to download our Raspberry Pi Imager tool and install it. I'm not gonna go through the process of actually showing you how to install this software as I'm on a Mac, and I believe most of you are most likely on Windows. But to get this tool, you're gonna go to raspberrypi.com slash software, and you're gonna download it here at this section of the screen shown here. Your download will should change from Mac OS to Windows. Once it's installed, you're going to be able to load the Imager tool. Here's what the Raspberry Pi Imager tool looks like. You're going to need an SD card and a Raspberry Pi, of course, and you're going to want to put your SD card into your SD card reader connected to your computer. With your SD card in your reader, you should be able to hit the Choose Storage button and choose your SD card. Now we can choose the OS and I'm going to go Raspberry Pi OS Other and I am going to choose the Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit version. Now you should be able to follow this tutorial on any other version, but in order to fully utilize our Raspberry Pi, the 64-bit version will be the best choice. And I'm using the Lite version as I don't need a desktop. Now, at this point, we can hit Write and begin writing the files to our SD card. But I want to take another step first, which is to hit this Settings cog here in the lower right hand corner of the window and that's going to present me with this screen. I can change my host name. I can enable SSH which I'm going to do because I'm going to be working with this system completely headless. I can set a different username. My username today is going to be VE. I can set up a password. I can set up Wi-Fi and enter my Wi-Fi password. For you, this will be blocked out, but I do want to note that it will show the password in clear text as you enter it. Just be aware of it. We can set our country code, which unfortunately for those of us in the US is all the way at the bottom of this. And we can set our local time zone. Now we can press save and we can write this image to the Raspberry Pi. And we press yes. Now I'll be back when this is done and the Raspberry Pi is booted up to show you guys how to do the next steps of this project. Okay, so I'm back. The image finished being made. I put the SD card into the SD port of the Raspberry Pi and attached the power adapter powering it on. Now I'm here looking at my TP-Link ER605 router and this should be a similar view to your router, although it will look different if you don't have the same router as me, and I'm looking at my DHCP client list. So I can see that the client name, Pi Day Docker, has been assigned an IP address of 192.168.3.5 for where I set that up. So now, now that we know the IP address of our Raspberry Pi, we can use SSH to log into our Raspberry Pi with the command SSH, our username, in my case VE if you remember right, the at symbol, and then the IP address. And it helps if you don't make a typo. We're going to say yes, since it's not a known service, and we're going to use the password. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is update our Raspberry Pi, apt, well, sudo apt date, and, and, sudo apt upgrade dash y, all right, so now that our Raspberry Pi has been updated and everything has been installed, we can go ahead and start installing 
Docker. And we're going to do that with a set of commands that I'm going to copy and paste from the Raspberry Pi, uh, sorry, the Docker website. We're also going to provide a link in the description of this video to our blog post where these commands will be provided for you, along with the rest of a write-up to follow along. So the first command to do this that we're going to use is going to be curl dash s s l h t t p s colon slash slash get dot docker dot com pipe delimiter s h. This is going to run a script provided to us from the docker dot com website that's going to install Docker. Alrighty, so Docker's installed. So the next command I'm going to do is to add my user, in my case VE, to the Docker user group. And I'm going to do that with add user VE Docker. And I need to put sudo in front of this. All right, so now my user has been added to the Docker user group. I can now check the version of Docker to make sure it was installed right. Docker slash v, and I get an output of 23.01 here in March of 2023. So I know that I have indeed got Docker installed. Now we're going to install Docker Compose. But Docker Compose is going to need some dependencies in order to install using pip. So we're going to install those dependencies on our server. Some of these dependencies might already be on your Raspberry Pi depending on the version that you're using. All right, now that we have our dependencies installed, we can go ahead and use pip3 to install Docker Compose with the command sudo pip3 install Docker Compose. And we can check the version of Docker Compose. And we can check the version of Docker Compose with the Docker Compose V command. And we got a version of 1.29.2. So Docker Compose is installed correctly. Now here on our blog, I walk you through how to create each and every one of these files actually from your Raspberry Pi and what they do. But I'm going to take a minute and we're going to walk through them on our computer and then we're going to use SCP to actually upload them to our Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and hide this window. And you can see on our desktop that I've added a folder here as things were installing. And inside of this folder, I kind of have a file structure. I have a folder called My App, which you'll understand more about in a few minutes. And another folder called Image. And inside of that folder is the Docker file. Now you don't necessarily necessarily need to set up your file structure like this. These are some of my choices, but I'll explain to you a little bit more about this file structure going ahead in the creation of the Docker file and the Docker Compose YAML file. So let's take a look at both the Docker file and the Docker Compose file here in Atom. Now we'll start with the Docker file here and the first Two lines call or tell Docker that we want to use the node image in 14 Alpine. So there's a tag of 14 Alpine. If you were to go to Docker Hub and look at the node JS images, you would find there's a bunch of different tags. We've chose 14 Alpine. Then we're going to set our working directory to the slash app directory or the root directory of our Docker container. And we're going to run the command npm install. That's going to install another set of software that we're going to use to create the Node.js or the React.js files and application by compiling it that we will then host. Then we're going to run the command npm which is installed with npm, create React app my app. Now necessarily you could change the my app to whatever app or whatever name you want. But remember this is a development server so my app kind of works. It's whatever we're going to run on this server for testing at that time. Now we need to change our working directory to app slash my app because a folder inside of the app or a root directory of this container was created in running the mpx command called my app. And a bunch of files were downloaded to it. And we'll see a little bit more about those files because they're important to getting this server up and running 
where we don't yet have any JSON or JS project files ready to go here. Then we're going to finally run from inside of that app dash, my app command, the mpx start command, which is going to start up the react.js server so we can begin working with it. Now, we're using Docker Compose to do some of the mapping and configuration of our built image. We don't necessarily need to use Docker Compose, but by using Docker Compose, we automate some of this. So we're going to use the version 3 script and then we're just telling it we're creating a service we're going to create a image name or container name of react.js dash dev and we're going to use our created image that we made from the docker file over here and we're saying that we're going to call that image react.js we're going to expose ports or map port 3000 to port 3000 of our container so a Raspberry Pi, when we communicate with it in the web browser, we're going to enter our IP address colon 3000. Now, we're going to map a folder from inside of our Raspberry Pi to the container itself. And then notice that we're mapping to that my app file that we created here inside of our Docker container or our Docker image. And we're going to map that to my app slash my app. Because when we download these files to it here in a minute, we're actually going to create a second folder called my app. You probably don't need to have the second my app, but I like it for organization. All right, so back at the command line, we are going to upload these files to our Raspberry Pi. All right, so with our files uploaded to our Raspberry Pi with SSH, we, or SCP, guess it is SSH, we can go back to our SSH terminal and begin working with these. So the first thing I want to do is run LS, and I'm going to show you that we now have a folder in our home directory, which our home directory is home slash ve. And if I run ls inside of that folder, you can see we have our Docker image and our image.myapp. Our Docker file is contained in our image folder and our my app folder right now will be blank. So we can look at that and okay. It's actually at the moment telling us this file doesn't even have, isn't even existing. Haven't experienced that, but let's continue on and see if it causes any problems. I know that there's nothing in that file at this time. All right. Oh, I see what's going on. All right. So we can go ahead and cd to this file, run ls, and now if we tried to cd like I just did, to our my app folder and run ls, you can see there's nothing in it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and back up, and we're actually going to cd into the images file, image file, where we've stored the Docker file. And then we're going to run the command docker build dash t and the name we want to call that. and we know from looking at our Docker Compose file that we need to call this file react.js. And then we need to put a space and a period to tell Docker the command has ended. Now we can run this. And because we didn't log out, it's telling me permission is denied. So I can actually exit this and reestablish the SSH connection and try running that docker build dash t react js image again and that this time should pull down our image now this image is quite lengthy because it downloads a lot of the js files that are needed for creating our dev server all right so it looks like our container has now been created and if you noticed or we look right here, there's a lengthy create container to create, 344 seconds. So with that, let's go ahead, start up our container, and we can retrieve the files that I've been talking about that are in the My App folder. So to start the container, we're going to run the command docker run dash d dash p 3000 colon 3000 and the name react.js. 
And now we can run the command docker ps, and we can see the container. The, it, we can see that the container is indeed up and running. If I adjust my screen here for you guys, you should be able to see the name and the full amount of information here. The next step we need to do is run a copy paste command on some of the information that we gained from the docker ps command. So the command that we're going to use to retrieve the files is docker cp or copy paste the container id number which you just saw me paste in colon slash app slash my app or the my app folder inside of the container that we created when we made the container space the path to where our files going to be stored in our case home slash ve, which ve is going to change depending on what your username is, react.js-docker, and then the my app folder. And like I've specified before, we're actually going to create another folder inside of the my app folder called my app. So we can press enter, and it's going to download the files, 250-ish megs worth. All right, so our files should be done. We can now run Docker PS again, and that's going to give us, this time, the name, which is right here, and we can run the command for stop and the name. Now, we should be able to run a CD dot and go back to our Docker Compose file. This time, we're going to run our Docker Compose file, and this is going to set up our React JS dev server and map the internal files from our container to our operating system so that if we so choose or so we can edit those files to create our first project. So with that we're going to run the command docker slash com compose up dash d because we don't want our terminal output. Now if we get an error message here, we're going to leave off this dash d and see if we can look at the terminal output to see what's going on. And our container is up and running. So we can just check to see if it's up and running by running the command docker compose ps and we can see from the output, indeed, the container is up and running. All right, so if we head back to our web browser, create a new tab, and we go to 192.168.35.3000, colon 3, you can see that we indeed now have a React development server up and running on our Raspberry Pi inside a Docker image. And if we head back over to our SSH window, and we ls... And we can cd to the my app and once again run a cd my app because like i told you we created two my app folders and we run an ls you can see this time we have contents inside that folder and we have the scr folder that our web browser is asking us to edit and then we can cd to the src and actually look at the project itself and you can see right there the app.js file that they're telling us to edit and then refresh your web browser if we do so so in honor of pi day we did this on a raspberry pi i hope you enjoyed it i hope you find this beneficial and informational and we've helped you work on your newest react js website as always have a good night